dear passengers, welcome aboard Flight Attendant Snippets Talk Show, hosted by Princess Aurelio. Once a flight attendant, always a flight attendant. Hi Sky Friends, hello sahabat terbang, welcome aboard my channel, Good AM PM. I am Princess Aurelio, a former flight attendant, your host for the Flight Attendant Snippets Talk Show. My guest speaker for this episode is Zanoke, a son of a flight attendant. In this episode, I will have a conversation with Zano, or Z as I nickname him, about him being a son of a flight attendant, me. Z was an unplanned guest speaker on that day because we started out testing the recording for this talk show Then we did a role play that turned into an actual tell me about yourself and then more. He is not a flight attendant, but a son of a flight attendant. And it is interesting to hear what he had to say. The conversation was serious but fun, so take a listen and keep watching. Tell me about yourself. Hi, I'm Zano. Um, I am 28 years old. I'm about to be 29 in April 27th. Yeah, it's in a couple months. Um, I'm a graphic designer. I am probably the best son she's gonna ever have. Um, I also play a lot of nerdy stuff like... Um, Miniatures, I paint them too. Yes, yes. Um, I am not Henry Cavill, unfortunately, but I'm still pretty fun, pretty cool, I think. Can be pretty mean sometimes, but that's okay. Um, I need to be sometimes. Uh, so yeah, that is it's me. Uh, thank you for having me in your house and give me food and you know letting me fix your stuff. Uh, yeah, back to you, Mom. Mm. Okay, that's that's Zano for you. Um, so now I want to ask you, why do you want to be a flight attendant? If you are already a graphic designer, you're kind of like a geeky. So if I, why do I want to be a flight attendant? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the only reason I can think of why I want to switch career from graphic design, mm -hmm. um, maybe one day there's a, you know, some crazy thing happened that computer completely shut down. There's no mm -hmm. need for graphic design anymore. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, I think flight attendant would be a pretty cool, you know, a pretty cool gig. Mm -hmm. You get to see the world. You can travel. Mm -hmm. um, you get to take a look at new places that you've never been before. Um, so I think that's that's a pretty good reason to be uh, a flight attendant. Where have you been with your flying career? I've been to actually I've been to Indonesia. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a great place, uh, especially if you go to Bali. Mm -hmm. Jakarta, there's some spot that's kind of iffy actually, but that's okay. Uh, like every cities, they they always have iffy stuff. I've also been to Malaysia. Malaysia is also a pretty cool place. Kuala Lumpur is a pretty sweet place. Which one you like the best? Malaysia or Indonesia? Indonesia, absolutely. Uh, there's a special place in my heart for Indonesia. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm from Indonesia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Classes up. <laughs> I was going to say you could ask this perspective of being a son I was going to say that, yeah. yeah. There you go. I was going to do that. Okay. Like, go that could be yeah. that, 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 the See, this is the perfect attendant. time for you to try mm -hmm. it out. So you can see how you look in the camera. If mm -hmm. you look stiff, then you're probably like, okay, I need to relax mm -hmm. in the camera. Yeah, so, so, how do you find it about your mom being a flight attendant? Okay, so how, basically how do I feel 
being a son of a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, it's pretty cool. Uh, you get stories all the time like, hey, I fly with, you know, the ex-president or, I don't know, the current, mm -hmm. what is it? Uh, no, that's the second president of Indonesia. The second president of Indonesia. Right there. The old man, right there. <laughs> yeah. So, cool that's, stories like that. Um, that's... Where are you? Where are that's you? your mom over there. Yeah, still still look the same. It's pretty, she's pretty <laughs> the same. She's got that you know young gene in her. There you go. Um, okay. You can probably like put you can probably put the photo up. I was also gonna say um, some podcasts like the one I listen to during their stories they'll each week they'll post a photo that goes with their thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you talk about a photo that you have, you can be like, check my Instagram. Yeah, I'll post I was it going to do that. So you yeah. can see it. Mm -hmm. And then you get more interaction. So you get yeah. traffic so, to your Instagram. I did that, yeah. Because yeah, I, I go to, to there that. to look at crime scenes that they post all the time. Yeah. Or, or pictures of ghosts. You should follow, <laughs> you should follow a crime scene Junkies. cleaner. Oh. No, he would clean like Oh yeah, I've seen one of the brains. Brain matters, yeah. bones, blood, guts everywhere. But anyway, uh, you get to hear cool stories like that. You know, she's meeting um, celebrities or she meets, um, <laughs> she flies to like, you know, dangerous, celebrities? dangerous zone. There you go. Nick Cage right there. National tre treasure. <laughs> yeah. He's super cool actor. I, be I didn't know that before as I was playing with him he's super cool now he's one of my favorite actor actors yeah so mm -hmm. there you go now you get to see like how are you gonna show it yeah probably might put it back so it's not like in I honestly it doesn't matter <laughs> you do whatever you want but you can change along the way mm -hmm. uh, the more you do this the more you know like People would say like, "Hey, can you move the stuff?" Or like, "Hey, can you keep the stuff?" You you get the the comments, the comments and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, you could always put this above you, and then you can interchange for each episode. You have the new stuff behind you. Yeah, like right here. Yeah, but then if I put oh. the yeah. you put the plastic over here. Yeah, it's up to you. You can. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that's what we're, I, I was saying too today. This, like because of this. So annoying. Uh, that's true. Uh -uh. Paint it black. Just to make it like no, it's fine. What is that? Cookie. It's an Italian wedding cookie. Yeah. Why did you get? Just put dust everywhere. Sugar yeah. dust everywhere. It's just like it's <laughs> sugar, honey. It's sugar. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's sugar, cookie. Get sugar. Yeah. So uh, okay. the monitor is there for when you are not recording. So when you are not recording, usually you want to take a look at that so you can adjust. Okay, so I might, I might need to be here a little bit or maybe I need to be actually closer. Or how do I sit? Maybe I sit maybe right like this. You can do whatever. I know, but I like... Would, no, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm going to tell Nanny like, oh, you can just... Whatever. You should have blankets too, so if they want to curl up in a blanket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool. There's a I'm very cool. relaxed. <laughs> but I need tables. Yeah. There's a few podcasts that both girls get cuddled up into the couch mm -hmm. and have these giant blankets, and then they have their microphone next to the couch and they bring it in front of their face and then just read off their phones mm -hmm. and then just talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's always. That's what I mean. I don't want it to be so far. There's long. so many things that you can do with it, mm -hmm. right? Because it's such a free. Um, there's like really loose, no free. wrong, right yeah. or wrong way to do this, but there is always an efficient way or like engaging way to do this. Mm -hmm. You can be formal, you can be open, it's mm -hmm. up to you. Because um, right now you you have things set up, you have this and then you have the Zoom. But the thing is, can you record oh, stuff yeah, in Zoom? 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 How do we, if I do the Zoom? Can you, we, record? you can record? You can record the meeting. <laughs> you can record the meeting? Yep. So and that's then probably the audio how. will come out? Because we would have mass meetings and it'd be like, this is recording. And it'll record it, save it, and then you okay. can go and edit. 
You don't. Are you uh, on you? Are you? No, we're you? using Photo Boost. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, the audio may not come out with no, Photo Boost. No, the the audio will come out, but that's a different story because right now we're in the recording stage. So, but can can I see if I want to publish it to YouTube or no? If I want to see it, can I hear the audio? Yes. And if I upload it to YouTube, will it work? Yes. Audio. Because I tried FaceTime and WhatsApp with Nanny. She's using WhatsApp and... Yes. It, has, it doesn't come out, the, the audio. I think you should go ahead and download Zoom. I did. I have. It. Oh, okay. Uh, I think click the stop button first. Dear passengers, we are in the cruising altitude. You may sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. Episode 2 Guest speaker Zan O.K., a son of a flight attendant. So, Hi. <laughs> we'll try this again. Hi, my name is Lano. Nice to meet you. I am trying to grow my mustache, but it's not working very well. <laughs> no problem. Okay. My problem is I have a wife. That won't be a problem anytime soon. <laughs> oh, that's yes, my chat. Okay, so how does it feel to be the son of a flight attendant? How does it feel? I feel Especially this flight attendant. This one? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, give me one second here. Let me think. Oh. Actually, I feel pretty proud. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, Why? Mom, that... My mom go went to places that are pretty cool. Uh, she went to some pretty sketchy place, like what was it? Um, War zone era. Oh yeah. What? Uh, Kandahar Bagram. Bagram. Afghan Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. She went to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and Kandahar that's pretty Bagram. crazy to me. Um, she also. You know, she no. told me stories about, okay, she went to the North Korea too, apparently, ladies and gentlemen. Um, She's in North Korea. Yeah. For so, the 80th birthday of Kim <clears throat> Jong Jun's grandpa, Kim Il sung. Kim Il, Kim Il sung? That's, that's the his grandpa. Name? That's the grandpa. I see. I see. I see. So not Kim Jong Il. That's it's, the. I see. Yeah, that's what I feel. I feel pretty I feel pretty cool, honestly. Um, I can say like, hey, yeah, my mom went to all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I feel. But as the son, yeah. do you have the benefit of being the son of a flight attendant? The benefit. Mm -hmm. Um well before I hit 23, was it? Mm -hmm. Or 28? 23 right mm -hmm. i think yeah so when i was under 23 years old mm -hmm. i get benefits like cheap flights or sometimes free flights mm -hmm. um i actually went to indonesia for free once uh i think or maybe twice twice, twice? Mm -hmm. no I, I yeah twice mm -hmm. but i think i still paid uh 80 bucks because i paid 10 percent. no or mm -hmm. is it free mm -hmm. free all the way to hong kong yeah, it was free all the way to Hong and Kong. Hong Kong to Jakarta. I see. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Sorry about that. But um, that's one of the benefits of uh, being a son or family relative of a flight yeah, attendant. Flight. Um, but honestly, I still think one of the biggest benefit is, mm -hmm. you know, my mom just telling me, a lot of cool experiences that most people just can't have that experience you know so people can't fly all over the world for free um but she can because she's a flight attendant um and as a son i get to fly domestically for free and occasionally internationally so i think that's it's pretty cool honeymoon honeymoon we pay for oh yeah yeah because you don't want uh, this is the good part because you don't want to be on a standby status. That's right, standby. Mm -hmm. That is they one of the. They do not want. Us. That's one thing that people don't understand <laughs> about being a relative. What is it? D three. Is that 
That's for that my previous airlines terminology, B3. B3. But so, it's a body pass. That's right. So you have to be in a wait list, basically, a waiting list. So if the plane is completely full, um, you are kind of like out of luck. You're just waiting in the airport for the next available seat that people didn't buy. Or sometimes people have it empty and then buy a last minute priority or like, you know, VIP, whatever. So they get the seat and you don't. So you just wait in the airport, sleep sometimes in, you know, cha on chairs and floors. So you don't want to do that? Yeah. You bought the tickets. I didn't want to do that. Full fare. Correct. No I didn't want to do that in my honeymoon, in our honeymoon. <laughs> so me and my wife, we decided to pay, but we got lucky. Uh, we went with EVA, uh, EVA Air for like 800 bucks a person. That's pretty crazy, honestly. Hmm. Yeah, usually it's $1,600, but... Well, so yeah, it was pretty nice too. It was a nice flight. I no, I refuse <laughs> to do that. I don't want people over there to, you know, um, staring at my wife. So I'm not gonna. I'm gonna show you guys my wife. Come on. Oh no. <laughs> Just a snippet of the <laughs> snippet. Just a snippet. Why are you so red? <laughs> like a shrimp. No, no, no sorry. Shrimp she is, special. She is shy. Shrimp. <laughs> I love my daughter in law. Yep. <laughs> She's so cool, pretty, sassy, talented. I am, I am pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and love sad, her. depressed, anxious. Oh, part of the we package. Part Don't of the we package. all? Kiss me, shooting. Yes. <laughs> so. Where did you go in Indonesia? Uh, we went to me and my wife went to Bali first. <gasps> uh, so <gasps> my my original plan, my ultimate honeymoon plan, was to sandwich Jakarta between two great experiences. So that is the point. Um, I know Jakarta can be overwhelming for uh, non locals mm -hmm. because it's a big city, it's a ginormous city filled with. Too many people, honestly. People no, should spread it out. Traffic. It's yeah, it's crazy. Very intense traffic. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I managed to squeeze that in between Bali and Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So we Why went Malaysia? to Bali first, uh, for I think it was a week, just under a week. We stayed at a villa for three, four days. It's very cheap, actually, like in comparison to um, villas with private pool, um, gated house, basically. Wow. I think we paid about $127 a, a night. Uh, but then like, your USD currency is also high. Correct. Compared to Rupiah Indonesian. Correct. Conversion. Um, I think it was. I think at the time it was pretty high. We got it for like fourteen thousand rupiah for each dollar. That's the conversion rate. Um, then we went out to. Uh, I thought it was a pretty decent hotel, but turns out it's it wasn't. It was actually a third rate hotel, but we managed. Uh, my wife survived. She survived through that uh, ordeal. Uh, I, it's still an experience. I want her to experience the whole thing, the good and the bad, <laughs> and the ugly. I forgot about that. I like. I think my mind covered that memory of that hot hotel room. That hotel was so hot, and I overheat. Over Even though there's AC, the AC doesn't work because we're on the roof, so the <laughs> sun just melted our skin into the bed. That's how bad it was. Um, uh, but it was still a. It was still an amazing experience, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we, I enjoyed my time. I think my wife did too, no matter how. We went to the um, cartel, <clears throat> that Bali cartel cafe shop that I found, remember? Oh, that's right. We went to visit, um, you know, fancier westernized coffee shops and stores. We went to one. No, we went to another the food bowl thing, like the juice bowl. That was in Bali. Like that That's was in, in Bali too. That was in what's it called? 
Puta Bali? No, the yeah. other one. The one that one wasn't even my pick. That was I'm not getting into this. Okay. <laughs> but then we went to Jakarta to visit my um uh, childhood home. Uh it looks like a haunted house at the time because we moved out of my childhood home and yeah, it's in shambles. Uh, but recently, I think it was a couple months ago, we checked again on Google Maps, and it looks like a palace. Wow. So the entire neighborhood got a full-on renovation. Wow. The whole neighborhood looks like... Really? Yeah, because apparently some big-shot politician lived like wow. a neighborhood over. So they kind of... re. Redo the yeah, redo the entire neighborhood. Neighborhood. It looks completely different. Uh, but then we stayed at my uh, grandmother's house. Mm. It was also very, very hot. Mm. Yes, her mom. Um, hello, Omarina. How are you? Hi, mom. Um, but she managed as well, even though it's burning hot in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she used to. It was good. We were used good. to it. Yeah. We lived there. It was good. Before we moved. It's definitely somewhere. bring huh? back some memories for me. Uh, we even met a couple of my friends, some of my childhood friends till today. Uh, we we hung out for a while and they actually did pretty well. Like my friends and my wife kind of connect. Language barriers was there, but they managed pretty well. They even, you know, had a uh, quite the, pardon my French, but you know. You, you can, can you can you yeah. can censor that out. <laughs> I know. I'm just using it as a. And then, lastly, we went to Malaysia to visit my dad, and we stayed there for about three days, just so she can meet my, uh, dad. That's that's the reason why I took her through Bali, Jakarta, and Malaysia to visit families, just my to see. Thing. Yep, that's but honeymoon. Talking about the flight itself, how do you find the flight attendant in that journey? Which flight attendants are the best? Which flight attendants? Or all of them are the best. Mm. Were the best. Honestly, Do from my from my matter? experience, from my experience, mm -hmm. um, I find non- American flight attendant are way nicer than you know American flight attendants for some reason. Why is that? Just I don't know. I feel like they're more um not blunt. I guess blunt in how they feel about their job sometimes. Because I know flight attendants sometimes get like you know bad treatment from customers and like you know passengers, passengers mm -hmm. because passengers can be pretty rude and overly privileged. So they kind of take it out on the flight attendant. And the flight attendant, American flight attendant, they're not afraid to show that that dissatisfaction mm -hmm. maybe and show it to the mm -hmm. customer as well. Um, the same thing with the gate. Agent. Gate agents sometimes can be rude. Not always. But then you meet flight attendants from Japan, from... Um, Jakarta, from Bali, from Malaysia, they're all Indonesia. very, they're very, very kind, very high standard of service. Like, well, American flight attendant has high service as well, but they are also very, you can, you can feel the difference. It's really hard to put my I finger on it. I work at the major airlines, American major airlines here in America. And I was, it's in the blood, hospitality. Yeah, hospitality. Not always, though. Not so all. I think it should not be, um, it should not matter. You can be any, in as any country, you can still deliver good hospitality because it's way beyond service absolutely so i still have my standard of excellent service it might be a here in it might be a reflection of more personal attitude more than what 
occupation you are in. Yeah. You know, um, I think it translates of how you do your daily life mm -hmm. and it translates in your career, whether you be a flight attendant, mm -hmm. revenue designer, or, you know, janitor. I think it reflects of how you interact with life itself, I think. Some people are rude because maybe they're just or plain rude. Hospitality can actually be trained. I agree. I agree. It can definitely be trained. Mm -hmm. it, but some people just don't want to. Even though you have to fake? Exactly. But that's the thing. <laughs> fake hospitality, I still I still think it's better. You can see it or feel it. But, but it can be trained. Hospitality can be trained. In definitely my experience, uh, I, my opinion, I think they, they definitely can be trained, but it's really more about their upbringing, really, because it's very part of it. Too. It's very prominent culturally. You can tell the difference. Ah. Yep. Um. Because like here, the service here is very different than the service in, um. When I was in Hong Kong or like Japan, in Asia. Uh, Hong Kong or Japan, um, and then Bali is different, Jakarta is different, Malaysia is different. They're they're very similar. They're very um, kind, and they're very I don't know. They're very, they're mm. their way of interacting is very different. They're very soft mannered. So culture. Yeah, it might also be the culture. It obviously. I honestly believe I believe that it's probably the culture, um, the way the not not the people culture. I think it's the job market culture, uh, job culture in the flight attendant world. Maybe what does that mean? Um, they just don't care about hospitality as much as other people. Maybe. Well, some people, you mean? Yeah, yeah, like companies here in general, they just don't care about hospitality. Just give them. Give them the service they needed and they wanted, and the standard. It. Yeah, just the bare minimum. Mm. So maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, but your know journey it itself. Do you have a um good flight journey? Yeah, all absolutely. around. Absolutely. Like I said, even though they can come up as rude or like not as caring, they still provide Perfect. service. You know, um, it might not be excellent because of their attitude or something like that, mm -hmm. but they still provide the service mm -hmm. that we required. You know, okay. so I can't really complain about that either, mm -hmm. because they're not like rude to me per se. They just they just do their job, mm -hmm. but they don't have that. I don't know that niceness to them. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not just about the job, like. Z here said it's uh it's in the blood as well yeah it's definitely hard to quantify because i yeah. don't know it's just my experience you're nice you're nice no matter how ups and down the flight may be you will still keep your good service hospitality yeah. all right let's wrap it up that's number one. Done. <laughs> That's number one. Yes. She's, she's pretty good at this. I think she's going to do fine. She's going to do mm -hmm. well. Um, I will still practice and practice. Yeah. Though. I think she needs some drinks, maybe. <laughs> maybe they'll, you know, soften up the mood a little bit. Lemonade. Needs to be harder. <laughs> but whatever. To be harder lemonade. Um, but my wife right there is watching Kate drama. Like a true nerd. Drakor. Drama Korea. <laughs> it's very trending in Indonesia right That's now. what Drakor means? Oh my god. Yeah. My mom Drakor knows Korea. more about I just found out about it last night. Another former flight attendant. My friend. Hey, 639. My attendant, former flight attendant, Wendy. She told me about that. Because she was watching it. And I'm like, what is Drakor? Uh, Drama Korea. Korea. <laughs> my goodness, Indone Indonesian just abbreviate everything. <laughs> I know. Everything. Indonesia abbreviate everything. I, yeah. I... <laughs> All right, mom. Okay. That's so right. let's stop recording. Dear passengers, 
We just landed at our destination. Have a pleasant day. My CTA call to action in this episode is on Zano and on myself. Z is into Warhammer Age of Sigmar. He builds the display board, paints the miniature, and plays the game. He participates in competitions and winning awards. He also sells his own creation for the gaming aid, a scoreboard tool. What a talented boy. Check out his website at www.zanocorelio.com slash the shop. I ordered my own low content publishing notebooks that I created myself to see how it looks like before I publish it and sell it in Amazon. I love them all. They're so cute. They come in variety of designs, so check them out. These low content publishing notebooks are available in Amazon. And that's it y'all. Thank you for watching my channel. Awaiting for your likes, comments, share, and please subscribe. See you in the next episode. Bye!